friends. Happy New Year. Hi, hello. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brooke. My pronouns are she, her. And it's been a hot minute, but we're here and we're going to talk about the books I read in 2022. It's a 2022 reading wrap up. So I use an app called Storygraph to track my reading instead of Goodreads. I just find there's more to Storygraph. You get like actual graphs and imagery to connect to the reading that you're doing. And I find it so interesting how it analyzes the reading you're doing. And so last year I made the switch to Storygraph over Goodreads. I don't post on Goodreads anymore. I only use Storygraph. The link to my Storygraph will be down below if you want to follow or join Storygraph. It's down below, I recommend, it's fun. But I just found Goodreads is just, it, do it doesn't update. It's not fun, it's, it is what everybody uses and so I still have Goodreads because I still use Goodreads to see what other people feel about books before I buy them. There are a lot more reviews on Goodreads than on Storygraph. Though Storygraph is becoming more popular and I think, I think it's the way to go, my friends. It's also not owned by Amazon, so. Screw Jeff Bezos. That's where all of my reading stats are going to come from, if you're wondering. Uh, and I'm going to post little sh uh, screenshots of each thing that I'm talking about over in the space beside me. This year, I read 62 books, 24,132 pages. Now, real quick, my goal was 112 books, so I really did not hit that. But to be fair, let me explain. To be fair, I last minute decided to go back to school. And so I was doing a lot of reading for school and not reading for personal life. And you know that thing they say that when you have to read for school, you find you don't really want to read for fun that much is true. I still love reading and I find reading to be a way for me to relax and and kind of escape what's going on in my real life. And so I do still read while I'm in school. I just don't read as much or as quickly as I do when I'm not in school, like last year. No, no last year was technically 2022. In 2021, I read 111 books and that's why I moved to my 2022 reading goal to 112. Cause I was like, let's do this. And then I went to school and um, got a social life and I didn't end up reading as much as I did the year before. So yeah, so I only read 62 books, not 112, but that is okay. That's okay, that's all right. I did play a lot of Animal Crossing instead of reading this year, but I just found that like, when my brain was real tired from school, that Animal Crossing was the perfect remedy for that. And so that's what I did. However, I did read a bunch of graphic novels this year and I got into manga this year. So that's exciting. That's a win. Let's get into the stats. The first book that I read was The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. I'm not going to go through all of the books that I read, but this is just fun to look at. It tells you the first and last book that I read. The last book I read in 2022 was King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair, which was a reread. This is really cool. Your 2022 story graph, a mood map of your reading, lighter books push the line up and darker books pull the line down. Something that I really like about story graph versus Goodreads is that it talks about the moods of the books that you read and it sort of averages what moods you're more drawn to in books. And I really love that feature and so this is cool. This is cool. I read a lot of lighter books this year, which is interesting because I really enjoy books that are very angsty and hurt my heart. Like if it doesn't hurt a little, is it even good? Apparently so because I read a lot of lighthearted books this year. But I think that's why I'm so drawn to fantasy a lot is because they're very angsty and very dramatic and I really enjoy that in a book. You explored new worlds, felt all the feels, and kept it light. And most of the stories developed at a steady pace. The next little chart is showing me is books and pages read per month. Uh, we started, as, as you can see, we started the year off really good, really on track for my reading goal. And it just... We just went downhill from there. <laughs> what is that, August? That has a really, oh, interesting. I must have read a lot of short books in August because I have a high books number of books read, but a low page count. And in June, I have 
the opposite. I have a high page count versus a low number of books read. I wonder what month did I read Prior of the Orange Tree? Because I did tackle that mammoth last year. Didn't really love it. We'll talk about that later, but I, I can't remember what month I read it in. The next graph is the genres I spent the most time with in 2022. Oddly enough, romance is at the top with 37 books. So more than half of the books I read this year were romance books, which is very interesting to me. I did go through a stage where all I wanted were rom-coms. Like I didn't want dark fantasy. I wanted light, fluffy, spicy rom-coms and that's it. So I think that's probably why I read a lot of them this year. And I really enjoyed most of them. That's, I guess romance is a, a genre I sort of dived into this year that I hadn't read really before and I really enjoyed it. So yay. The next is fantasy with 32 books. That's just a given for me. Fantasy is the love of my life. It always will be. It will always have a special place in my heart. I love fantasy so, so, so much. So it's no surprise that I have so many books in the fantasy section. Contemporary is 18. This is a genre I really wanna get even more into, reading literary fiction, contemporary fiction. I just think it can be so interesting and such beautiful writing can come out of those books that I don't typically see in fantasy or romance. So I really want to get more into that genre this upcoming year. But I read 18 of them this year. I mean last year. Help. It begins. Young adult, I only read 13. Obviously I'm an adult. I still read young adult, but I am not the target audience. And so I only read select young adult books mostly fantasy because fantasy the age of characters is a little bit more ambiguous and so it can be harder to tell what age the characters actually are and so me as someone who's older can connect with a character who is technically younger in those books a bit more than a contemporary young adult so that's what i read from from young adult and they're wonderful wonderful books don't knock young adult my friends don't knock it but also don't expect adult content in the young adult books because that's not the target audience. There's a whole discord about young adult books not being spicy enough and I just read the room. Just because it's not spicy or not meant for adults doesn't mean that it's not a good book still. Like a good story is a good story, full stop. Just don't be silly and criticize young adult for being too young for you if you're an adult. That's what I'll say on that. All right, here we go. The longest book that I read was Priori of the Orange Tree. No surprise there, at 848 pages. It felt longer. We'll get into that. The shortest book I read was a Steminist novella by Ali Hazelwood, Under One Roof, at 112 pages. The average length of the books you read was 386 pages, and it took you around eight days to finish each book. I feel a little called out, just a smidge, but that's because in 2021, I was an unhinged reader and I would read a book that was 400 pages in two days. And so this year I read a lot slower than I did the previous year. And that's completely fine. Everyone reads at a different pace. But personally, I feel a little bit called out from Storygraph, just a little. The book I read in the least amount of time was Every Summer After by the wonderful Carly Fortune. I've read that book in a day, if you have not read it go do so. I didn't put it down. I started reading it and I kept on going all day long. I had plans that day and I didn't do anything but read that book. I could not put it down. It was a five star for me. We met Carly last year. We went to an author event of hers and it was so much fun. It was so wonderful. She also has a new book coming out in 2023 so go pre-order that. Also she's a Canadian author which is super cool so let me just pump up Carly Fortune real quick. <laughs> go read her books. The most time I spent reading a book was 61 days. <laughs> Gods and Monsters by Shelby Mahurin. It's the third and final book in the Serpent and Dove series. And I didn't love it. It was fine, but I didn't love it. And I think that's why it took me so long to read. I kept putting it aside and picking up other things. But I, I enjoyed it and I enjoyed the series as a whole. So I might reread them actually at some point. Who knows when. Authors I spent the most time with in 2022. Lynette Noni, she, I read her trilogy, The Prison Healer and the other two books that I cannot currently recall the names of. Loved that trilogy. It's one of my favorite trilogies ever. It's a YA fantasy series and it's just so well written. The world is so 
immersive and it's so intriguing. Like at the end of book one there was a plot twist that I legitimately did not see coming and I pride myself on being able to guess what happens in the book. Not only that, but I peek at the back of books. I, I will read the last sentence or paragraph of the book just to see where it ends, how it ends. It doesn't spoil anything for me because I don't know how we get to that point. This shocked me. Knowing what I do and knowing what I knew, the twist shocked me in this series and that says something to me. It's a really good series. I highly recommend if you're looking for a new fantasy series to pick up. It's exciting, adventurous, it's filled with magic and two rival families, betrayals by lots of people. It's really, really good. The other author is, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm gonna mispronounce this, Laura Talassa, perhaps, Talassa. I read a trilogy of hers. It's a fantasy romance trilogy. It was good. It was one that that is just easy to lose yourself into. I wouldn't call it like prime literature, but if you're looking for like a spicy trilogy to get lost in, it's a good choice. It's a good choice. One of my new favorite authors that I discovered last year, Emily Henry. I read all three of Emily Henry's books. I started with Book Lovers, um, which I think is my favorite, though my best friend's favorite is Beach Read, which is so, so interesting. I really enjoyed Beach Read also. And I read People We Meet on Vacation while I was on vacation. That just seemed fitting. I uh, love Emily Henry. Cannot wait for her next book that's coming out in 2023. I'm very excited. Emily Henry is one of my new favorite authors. Her writing is just, it's funny. She writes um, general fiction, but they are romance plots, but the books don't solely focus on the romance. Like the romance is a is an important part of the story, but it's not the focus of the story, you know? And I really enjoy how she writes her books. She's a funny author. She's clever. And I love that. Highly recommend Emily Henry if you're a rom-com fan. 2022's average rating was 4.09. Looks like you know how to pick them. I, it, I feel like it takes a lot for me to rate a book really low. I rate based on my gut feeling on the book. And I, I enjoy most of the books I read. So... I typically enjoy what I read, and if I don't enjoy it, I will usually DNF it. I feel like I don't have a lot of low ratings below three stars, because I I will just say, fuck it, I'm gonna read something else. So I'm not, I'm not surprised by that average rating of 4.09. I've read a lot of good books last year, so that's fair. In 2022, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven five-star reads. Seven. Seven books I thought were brilliant. Two of those are nonfiction audiobooks that I read. The first was Ain't I a Woman by Bell Hooks, which was really, really good. Super eye-opening, wonderful read. It's about Black women in feminism and how Black women fit into feminism. It's really interesting really recommend. The other is From the Ashes by Jesse Thistle, who is Canadian um, and he is Indigenous. And so this book sort of tells his story and his personal trauma. It's a heavy read, but I think it's an important book. And also Jesse Thistle released a poetry collection this last year that I just recently bought that I'm very excited to read because I had read this book. Another five-star read was Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lin Tan. I will not hear a negative word about my baby. I will not. I refuse to hear it. You can tell me nothing bad about this book. Nothing, not one thing. It was so good. The storytelling is so beautiful. It's a fantasy uh, based on a Chinese myth. It's a, a sort of retelling of Chinese mythology um, and it's just so beautifully told. It was such a beautiful read. I loved it so, so much. And I have the sequel to read. The sequel came out in 2022. I'm sad I didn't read it in 2022, but we're, it's high on the list for 2023. My camera battery's gonna die. I charged it. I swear that's very annoying. Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan is another five-star read. It was a romance. It, it's another one that I will not hear a bad word about my baby. 
I loved that book with my entire being. Archer is mute from an accident and so he speaks sign language. He's kind of the stranger in town. Nobody really knows much about Archer. Nobody can talk to Archer because Archer cannot speak and no one in the town signs until our main character comes along. Her dad was deaf so she knows signs. She gets to know Archer and the rest is history. It's so cute. It's so good. Back to Emily Henry, book lovers I gave five star. I really loved how book lovers kind of used classic romance tropes against itself and made fun of that but while still using them. It was very clever. I really loved it. It was my introduction to Emily Henry. Love. Every Summer After, Carly Fortune. Of course got a five star from me. I read it in a day. Every Summer After is a general fiction, but it's a romance. It tells the story of Percy and Sam who had been childhood sweethearts and then something bad happened. They haven't spoken in like 10 years and there's an event that brings them back together and they have to suddenly deal with everything that happened between them. And it's sweet, it's angsty, and I loved every second of it. And then the last five star read I had was Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kemmerer. Bridget Kemmerer is one of my favorite fantasy writers ever. I love her writing so so much. She just immediately brings you into her world. Her writing doesn't feel like work to read. There are some books that are well beautifully written, but it feels hard. It feels like work and her books don't feel like work and I love that. This is the sequel to Defy the Night. It's a series I love. Basically it's about this kingdom. There is a sickness going on and there is only one cure, these moonflower petals and the of course royalty and nobility have too much of it and the poorest populations have none. And so it's sort of a sort of like Robin Hood style retelling. Hi buddies. Okay, new filming location. Also, I'm filming this on my iPad because my camera battery died and I don't have time to wait for it to charge to keep filming. So we're making do. We're improvising. We are MacGyvering it. Anyways, I think I was talking about Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kemmerer before I was so rudely interrupted by my camera battery dying. Obviously, things don't go as they were planned to. People aren't who we think they are. It's a really good, good series. And I highly recommend. The characters are imperfect. They are well thought out and I really like them. Like, I really like them. Like, I can't believe that I have to wait for the next book to come out. I just want it now. So like, if Bridget Kimmer could do her thing or like give me an arc of her book when it comes out, I would, I would be so happy, so happy. So those are the books I gave five stars. Those were my favorites. The cream of the crop, if you will, that I read this year. Um, here's a little graph of all of my ratings. I mostly gave books four stars. Look at that thing. She's she's a high rolling, sky high reaching tower. Don't ask me what that was either. I don't know. The month with the highest average rating of books that I read was November. November, the books I read in November all collectively had an average rating of 4.5. Hmm. To be fair, a lot of good books came out in November. Like there was a lot of good books published in November. So that's that. February wasn't apparently my favorite month. It had an average rating of 3.5. However, February was also the month with the most read pages. I had 3,859 pages read in February. Apparently I read a lot of not not great books in February. You explored the works of 40 new authors, including Sarah Jackson, Mia Sheridan, and Holly Jackson. 39 of the books you read were part of a series, and I revisited a total of two books this year, so I reread two books. I started or continued a bunch of series. I love a good series. Love it. And I explored 40 new authors. How exciting is that? I love that it tells me that because I feel so excited that I read books by 40 authors I had never read before. How exciting is that? 2022 at a glance. All of the books. Oh Jesus. All of the books that I read this year. Let's go through and I'll pick out a few of my favorites from the year and a few that just 
missed the bar. A few favorites. Let's go through, I'll say a few of my favorites. The Prison Healer, that whole trilogy. The Paris Bookseller by Carrie Maher was a literary fiction novel that I absolutely loved. It's a slower read, but it introduced me to one of my new literary heroes. Miss Sylvia Beach, who, if you didn't know, is the original owner of the Shakespeare and Company bookstore in Paris. The one that's currently in Paris is a remake of her original. She shut her original down in 1945 because she's a badass. It's really cool. She published James Joyce's Ulysses. Never having published a book before, being a woman, being gay, um, and being American in... Paris. She published a book that the states had banned because of its explicit nature. What a badass right then and there. Anyways, this tells the story of, of her a little bit and the publication of Ulysses. So the Paris bookseller, highly recommend. It, it touched my soul. It's a book I will never ever forget. I had an arc. I went out and bought the physical copy. I'm tempted to go buy the um, paperback, which just released recently. I want it. Like, I want every version of this book because she's so cool. What a legend. I can't believe that she's not more well-known. I cannot believe that. This book, love that book. When Sparks Fly was a rom-com that started my kind of need for rom-coms, and I really loved it. I just did. Scythe was a book I did not expect to like. I read it for a readathon and I don't really read sci-fi. It's not typically my thing, but I had it for a prompt and I was like, okay, I'll read this because it looks like it's not quite sci-fi. It looks like it's still a bit fantasy, but not too far in sci-fi that I, can, I would lose interest. And I read it and I loved it. Loved it. I went immediately and bought the other two books and I still have to read the other two books, but I really enjoyed Scythe. It was probably the most shocking read of the year in terms of what I expected from it. I expected to like have to force myself through it and not really enjoy it, but I didn't. I, I read it in like what a day and a half, two days maybe, so that was a surprise for me. Glow by Raven Kennedy. Love the Plated Prisoner series. It's spicy, it's interesting. I want them in hard copy. I was reading them as ebooks this year. Hamnet was a really good one by Maggie O'Farrell. It's a slower read, but it's so beautifully written. And it's so intriguing. It tells the story of Shakespeare's family, but from his family's perspective, and Shakespeare is never referred to by name. He's always referred to as the brother or the son or the teacher, the tutor, whatever. But he's never referred to by name. And I think it's intentional and very interesting that that was written the way it was. It places emphasis on his family that doesn't normally get placed there. And I really enjoyed that. Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. Really enjoyed that. The Laura Olympus books. Really enjoyed those as well. Ghosts by Dolly Alderton. Highlight of the year also. Like, it's such a relatable read. It's not necessarily a happy book, but it's just so relatable. Just... For where I'm at in my life, like in my mid-twenties, going into my thirties, like it was just so, so relatable. The X-Hex was really fun. I really enjoyed that. I have the sequel to read, which I'll probably save until October actually. Those are some highlights from what I read this year. Now for some misses, some fails. The first and biggest one being Caraval by Stephanie Garber. I feel like people are going to come at me for this one but I just didn't like it. Like she just gaslit the main character the entire time. And I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't. I wanted so badly to like this book so that I could do this series because it's so popular, but I really disliked it. It rubbed me the wrong way. I'm sorry to everyone who loves it. It can't be me. I can't be one of you. It got a 2.5. Another miss for me was the Priori of the Orange Tree. I feel like people are going to come at me for this one too. I wanted so badly to like this book and I enjoyed it. However, did it need to be 850 pages? No. Would it have been better if it had been split into a series where you could more fully develop every plot point that was in this humongous book? Yes. Was I promised lesbians and dragons? Yes. Did it deliver? Kinda. Not 
to the expectation, though it did not meet my expectation. Everyone raves about Priori of the Orange Tree and it missed. It missed it for me. I think I gave it a 3 or a 3.5. This book makes me upset. Am I going to read the prequel that's coming out? Probably. Am I going to buy the two of them? Probably. Mostly so that I can have them both on my shelf and be like, see those? Those bricks? I read those. Will I ever reread them again? Probably not. It just missed. It is a beautiful cover though. Also, the author doesn't like to write fight scenes, but you wrote a fantasy book that had a war in it and you didn't like to write fight scenes and that was a huge, for me, huge fail. Gods and Monsters Kind of Missed by Shelby Mahurin. I didn't love it. I was like, it, it was meh. Book one I really enjoyed. Um, I'll probably reread them at some point though. I kind of want to reread them all back to back to see how they flow and how they read. I'm very intrigued by that. Kingdom of the Feared, oddly enough, I wasn't, it wasn't a full miss because I still enjoyed the book, but it wasn't a, a hit like I was expecting it to be. I think I gave it like a 4 or a 4.5, but, but she missed the mark. The first book was such a banger. The second book had middle book syndrome, but it was still good. And the third book, this one, it just missed. Like things, there was too many things happening in this one book. It was one of my most anticipated releases and it disappointed me. I'm upset about it. I will reread those books. That's another one that I think I need to read back to back to back just to see how it flows and if it flows better. That's what I read. If you want to see everything that I read last year or everything that I'm currently reading, you can go follow me on Storygraph down below. And that's what I update. That's what I use. I love it. I think it's cool. And I want more friends on it. So if you have Storygraph, add me. My link is down below. Anyways, that's 2022 wrap up. I read some pretty amazing books. I read some books that I enjoyed but missed the mark. Overall, I think it was a success regardless of the fact that I didn't hit my reading goal. I think it was a success. I read a bunch of new authors. I bet I read a bunch of things in new styles that I hadn't previously been willing to read. So that's, I think that's at the end of the day, what reading is really about is reading new things, expanding your horizons. And um, I think I did that last year and I'm going to continue to do so next year. And I can't wait. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was interesting. It was certainly interesting for me to kind of go through all of that in a little bit more depth. So uh, yeah, happy new year. I can't wait to talk about my 2023 reading goals in my next video. That's a little hint, sneak peek for the next video. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so, so much for watching. Bye.